Hey everyone, this is Ross and we are reviewing one of the best figs I have today. Um, it's called LDA or Long de Dute or Long Dute, Longo de Augusto, Long of Portugal, um, Longo de Portugalo. There's so many names for this because it's such a great fig that it's been spread all throughout the world. Uh, coming from France, this particular strain. But also, uh, it's in Italy, it's in, Fr it's in Spain, it's in Portugal. Uh, this fig's all over the United States at this point. It's also one of the hardiest figs that exists. And it's really easily identifiable by these leaves. Long, finger-like leaves. And they say they're finger-like because each of these lobes here is basically equivalent to a long finger. And there's not many figs out there that exist like this, especially with the serrations, the, the variation here. It's not just a straight line. There's these little edges in it, margins. I'm not exactly sure of the terminology there. But uh, when you see a leaf like this, a leaf pattern like this, you can pretty much narrow it down to about three to five different varieties that are found in the United States. And this one's very easily characterized by having an earlier fig. It ripens early in the mid-season here. It's one of the earliest for sure. It also puts out a really long fig. It has a long neck to it. But the main crop is nowhere near as long of a neck as the Breba. The Brebas are always usually larger figs. They have longer necks to them. Uh, the tree can focus more of its energy into fewer brevas than it can the main crop. What's nice about this particular variety is that it dies early, it seems like. Um, you can see it's fruiting here for a second main crop if I had a long enough season. Um, so by the, the, the fact that it's fruiting and growing sort of at the same time is really slowing down that vigor. And at the top here, we have wood that is probably going to harden up in time before our frost, before November. I also have an air layer on this tree that was only put on about a month ago, and you can see how ridiculous that looks. I mean, a lot of my air layers actually look like that, so not nothing too special, but when you air layer a tree that's in the ground, we just put this tree in the ground, it actually had suffered pretty, um, pretty hard actually in a pot because we had a bad scale issue on some of the limbs in a pot. And I tried my best last year to get rid of scale, but this tree seemed to be impacted the most. So even though it's kind of old at this point, um, I think it's now I've had this variety for three years. In all honesty, um, it's been kind of set back for a while. So even though it's been set back, it really got itself nicely planted into the ground from a 10 gallon size pot. We mounded it up nicely, just like our Azores Dark over here, which is actually ripening a fig, you can see. In the ground, our LSU Champagne is the same thing. And if I zoom in, you can also see a fig down there in the bottom left, right there. So all these in-ground trees are ripening here from being just planted in the ground this spring. And you can see they've grown quite nicely, but have different obviously of different vigor, right? The Azores Dark is half the size as an LDA. And that is usually a good thing, uh, but not always, because in terms of productivity, if this thing's more vigorous and it also puts out fruit as it grows, which is a really good sign, then inevitably an LDA could potentially be more productive than an Azores Dark. Same thing goes for the LSU Champagne here, but uh, it seems to be a bit too vigorous and it's not doing exactly what the LDA is doing here. So, um, point is, it's a very hardy variety. It holds up well to the rain. It's a large fig. Um, it does have a sometimes have an open eye, which can be a bit of a, a nuisance. Um, you can definitely get some bug damage in there, but it doesn't split very often. I haven't seen many of these split. This is also a really incredibly tasty fig that if I put this down for you guys again and zoom in, you'll see this really awesome 
pool of honey there at the bottom. It's an incredibly sweet fig, incredibly tasty. I want to try it for you guys right now. We're doing this series here on all the tasty figs I have, all the really incredibly worthwhile figs. This is one of them here, guys. This is, without a doubt, one of the best ones that everybody should have. In terms of overall productivity, the flavor, how well it does here in this climate, um, it's in my top five, my top 10 at least, um, of how awesome this fig is. If you give it an overall rating to every fig, this one's at least in the top 10. And it does well everywhere. It does well, not just here, it does well in California, in drier climates. It's a really well adapted, it's a very old variety. Um, it's wonderful. So let's try it now. The whole thing is just filled with honey and syrup. Really nice pulp that's just so smooth because it's filled with so much honey. It goes down very easy. The, the skin is actually sort of thick. You can peel it very easily though if you wanted to, but I think the skin adds a nice flavor, more of a mild flavor to it to counteract all that sweetness. There's a wonderful berry flavor in here. It's just a winner, guys. It's incredible. For me, that's probably a four out of five in terms of flavor. Just nuts. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care.